Hey everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Jan, also known as Sydney Plant Guy and I love growing aeroids indoors. I usually focus on moss poles, but today we are looking at some of my anthuriums that need repotting and I'm giving you a quick update on my IKEA cabinet. I've got a full video on my anthurium collection in my IKEA cabinet, so feel free to check it out. I will link it at the end screen. But let me give you a really quick rundown on the setup of my IKEA cabinet. The setup in itself has not changed since the last time I recorded the video. I still have a fan. That fan is on 24-7. I have a grow light. That grow light is on for 12 hours a day. And to protect the little seedlings at the top or the little plants at the top, I built a little shade cover just from a shade cloth and a coat hanger myself. I have a grid that I got from Bunnings at the back and I managed to hang all of my pots just using these clips that uh, usually go with the IKEA pack board. So I was really lucky that they fit the metal grid that I've got mm -hmm. as well. Since the last time I've done a video on my cabinet, I have actually reduced the numbers in this cabinet quite significantly and that's mainly because the queen is now so large that it takes up the majority of the cabinet. So I really mainly have the queen in there, a few smaller plants at the top and a couple of plants at the bottom of the cabinet as well. But a lot of the other anthuriums that used to live in my cabinet gotten too large and had to move out. All right, back to repotting. These anthuriums are in desperate need for a repot. So I thought I'll take you along today uh, and I'll show you how I repot my anthuriums. The main problem I have with my anthuriums or the main, the main thing that I'm trying to achieve is um, I'm trying to keep the pot size quite small because I want to hang it up on my, in my IKEA cabinet. So the largest I can really, the largest pot size I can really hang in my IKEA cabinet are these 14 centimeter pots. So they are currently in 10 centimeters and I'm going to bump them up to 14. Once a plant outgrows the 14 centimeter pot, I'll put it in a 20 centimeter pot, but that's also the time I actually need to move them out of the cabinet. I just don't have enough room for these large pots in there. So both of these will get a 14 centimeter pot and this little seedling over here will just start getting a 10 centimeter pot. So let's maybe start off over here. All right, this is an Anthurium papillomillimillum um, crossed with Dressleria. Yeah, I'll put the name. I'll put the name of this plant on screen because I honestly can't remember. It's probably not ideal to repot them just now because the medium is really dry. So I'm gonna have a hard time getting these out of the pots because they're pretty root bound. So I'll try and remove them without breaking any of the roots so oh, there we go beautiful all right i mean as you can see that was very very root bound in here um, i'm not worried about having my plants being root bound because i provide liquid nutrients to them weekly weekly so every week i use my gt australia foliage focus to water them and those are mineral nutrients that are ready to be absorbed by the plant straight away so i don't rely on the plant getting nutrients from the potting medium itself i'm relying on the potting medium just absorbing the um, water and the nutrients with every watering and then uh, give them up to the roots so that's how I get away with keeping them in quite small pots um, while still making them thrive because they still have plenty of access to nutrients. Now, I don't want to disturb the root system too much. I do want to loosen it up a little bit, but because my mix is so chunky, I know that there's plenty of air pockets in there anyway. So I'm not worried about compressed medium in the middle of this root ball that could I retain too much moisture. It's actually pretty aerated in there, sticking my finger in it. So I'll try and find a good medium between slightly aerating this a little bit and breaking it down, but not enough to potentially disturb any of the roots. I'm happy with that as it is. So I'll take my 14 centimeter pot and I've got a large 
bucket of my Aeroid mix. I have a specific video on my Aeroid mix, which I will also link at the end screen for you. Right, I put a little layer of Aeroid mix in first, and then I'll pop the plant in. Now I don't want the plant to oh, want the plant to not reach all the way to the top just yet. So I give it more room to grow. So I want the plant. This is perfect. All right, I'll top up the rest with Aeroid mix and any leaves that are going to be covered by the mix now, I'm just going to plug out, ideally use scissors. I'm going to shake it to make sure that little particles go all the way in between the roots as well. Alrighty, I'm happy with that. Um, these aeroids really love having some nice little air pockets in, in the mix. Uh, those air pockets just basically are like really nice humid air and it, uh, with, with a lot of oxygen in it. So these aeroid roots really love these little pockets. Uh, so I don't want to condense the mix too much. The whole idea is that the mix is so chunky that I do, uh, I create a lot of these little air bubbles. So I, I wouldn't compress it. I just shake it a little bit. Um, and then I put a top layer of moss um, at the top. That's because anthuriums climb really, really slowly. And as they climb or as they grow, there are these roots sticking out from the side of the stem. I want to make these roots grow into the moss and then from the moss into the, um, into the pot. So it's basically just preventing these roots from drying out before they get to reach the top. All right, one down, let's move on to the next one. This, this is a little crystallinum and it's actually pushing out a new leaf just then. I mean, technically I try to not repot while plants grow new leaves, but it was inconvenient timing, sorry. Um, all right, again, I'll try and loosen up the pot a little bit. You can see, oh, beautiful. You can see how loose this mix still is. Like, that's exactly what I want. I do not want my mix to compact. I don't want my mix to overwater it. With, uh, with every watering. I don't want it to start getting compact and uh, really dense. Like, you want to make sure that it's really aerated. So, this comes to show that even though this plant has been in this mix for a while now, the mix hasn't condensed or compacted at all. So, it's a good mix. And I can totally also reuse some of this. What I usually do is I'll just reuse the mix uh, for plants on my, bal on my balcony instead. Alrighty, same here. I'll give it a little top dressing of moss. That moss also stops the aeroid mix from drying out. It creates a little barrier to stops all of the moisture from just evaporating. So it is just positives and apparently it helps with the pH as well. But um, I, that's too scientific for me. I don't really do pH, sorry. Of course, I'll need to add the clip back to the back of the pot so I can hang it up later. If I'll find it again. These clips are much stronger than expected. Alrighty, now this plant is very large for this tiny pot. And this plant is special because this is my own hybrid. So if you've watched my making anthurium baby videos, uh, these, uh, this is one of the hybrids. So I put all of the hybrids in just one big pot, but I actually took one aside and grew it in my cabinet. And it is actually growing the moist out of all of them because probably because it's not competing with all of the other little seedlings, but also because it has just perfect conditions in that cabinet. So it was way overdue for this to be repotted. It has really cute little roots. I don't want to disturb this too much. Beautiful. So I'm going to give this a 10 centimeter pot. So 
so I'm here again. Actually, I will remove these little leaves because they will just be covered by moss now anyway. And cute little moss layer at the top. Beautiful. So overall with my anthuriums, I usually stay quite, I usually underpot them a little bit. All right, I've got another one that's already too big for the IKEA cabinet. Um, this usually hangs on the wall right behind me. And all I really do is I've just got a nursery pot. I just, you know, that little lip that the nursery pot has, there's like a, a nail sticking out and I just hang it on there. So it's like the most insecure setup you've ever seen. What that also means is I can't give it a larger pot if I want to keep it in that spot. Or I would need to actually sort out like a proper way of hanging it from there. So I just want to look at it because it's also not in a planter. It's just in that nursery pot. So it's been exposed to a lot of sun. So you can see a lot of algae build up on the side of the pot. And I have not repotted this in over a year. So I was just really curious to see what it looks like and maybe just give it a little bit of a fresh bit of medium yes so this is definitely a little more root bound than the ones before and this mix is also not quite as well draining as i make it these days so it definitely got like a previous version of my aeroid mix i can definitely smell a little bit of root rot or rotting organic matter that's for sure so i'm trying to be careful but i do want to explore um, and look what the root system looks like sure that this is all good this has crazy roots the roots are like super super thick yeah, i'm really trying to get in there so usually the roots will grow towards the outside of the pod leaving you with like this middle bit of substrate so what you don't want is that the substrate in the middle just becomes really dense and compacted and starts potentially causing um, rot issues so I'm getting in there in the middle and right, la la la, I'll speed this up for you. Okay, I mean, look at these roots. That's pretty crazy. I'm feeling really terrible trying to force these roots back into like a little pot. Oh, but I also really like having it hang there. So let me think of... I'll give it a larger pot after all, and then I'll figure out how I make it hang over there. These are three plants, by the way. There's three plants in here. They're all, they're all, I just bought it as one, and it just really kind of started splitting itself. So I'll be back. Let me get a bigger pot. Alrighty, back with a larger pot. I do think this plant deserves a little bit more room so it can keep growing. So 20 centimeter pot, let me fill it with a bit of aeroid mix first. All right, got the aeroid mix. Now I'm putting that plant in here. I'll move it kind of towards the back end of the pot because these are, you know, I don't know if you can see this, but they're almost like crawling towards the front. So they'll eventually crawl over the pot. So I put it towards the back end of the pot so it can keep crawling and I'll top it up. Beautiful, and now I'll do a little bit of a layer of moss on here as well. It also keeps it really nice and tidy actually, so the moss stops any pieces of bark from falling out when I move the pot and so on. Hey baby bread, almost your dinner time, isn't it? All right, that's it. Short and sweet video for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to like, subscribe, and leave a nice comment. And I'd love for you to check out my full Anthurium collection and IKEA cabinet setup over here. All right, take care. Bye.